Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we'll be talking about how to get a straight leg straddle, of course with the bent arm variation. Got my straight leg straddle when I first started aerial a couple months in. Uh, but after moving from Charlotte to Raleigh, I did not have a consistent place to train. In that time, I lost my straight leg straddle and had to build it back up again. In the time it took me to build it back up, what I ended up doing is focusing a lot on researching what is a straddle, what muscles were used to get into a straddle. I have three books that I will be referring to. Applied Anatomy of Aerial Arts by Emily Sherb, DBT. Defying Gravity by Stephen Lowe. Aerial Physique Fit by Jill Franklin. So it took me a few months to get my straddle back. I wasn't consistently training, I wasn't consistently conditioning, and I wasn't going to the gym. All those things on top of it made it so that I lost the engagement and muscle memory that I needed to perform a straight leg straddle. And then moving to Raleigh, my straddle had become this. It wasn't bad. I could still invert, but I couldn't lift my hips up high enough to complete the inversion. I had needed to do a, have a little help. Um, I was so discouraged, very upset. I really difficult to get to class thinking that, oh, I can't even do a clean straddle. Mind you, you don't need a clean straddle to go to class, but I was very proud of the work that I had done to get to that point, and it was kind of devastating. First, what I did was look at the Applied Anatomy of Aerial Arts. On there, they, she has a list of all like the aerial essential movements and what is needed to perform those movements. First, what you need to gain is proximal stability. Uh, this is described as the stabilization that must occur at the proximal joints and muscles so that the more distal ones can move efficiently. Basically what it's saying is your core needs to be stabilized in order to move parts of your body that are further apart from your core. Your legs, our core is the center of our bodies, it is where it all begins. Core stabilization is important to transfer forces efficiently from the shoulders and hips back to the center. So after reading that, analyzing all the parts of the body that I needed, I made a list and set that aside. Then I got another book called Overcoming Gravity, catered to creating a workout plan, how exercise works, and the different types of exercises. The book goes into deep depth, but the, first, the only three that we really need to remember are the concentric, isometric, and eccentric movements. Concentric means the full range of motion of the muscle. So for example, a push-up meaning you would, you know, push your, let yourself go down and then push yourself back up. Isometric exercises. So these are static positions and the muscles stay the same length throughout the entire part of the holding. So for example, holding a plank or holding a half push-up, that would be an example of isometric exercise. Eccentric exercises, which are slow controlled movement where the muscles lengthen throughout the entire repetition. So example, slowly lowering from the top of a push-up position to the start of a push-up position. If you're not strong enough to do the concentric movement, so let's say you're not strong enough to do the push-up, you would wanna do the eccentric version of the push-up. So slowly lowering yourself for a certain amount of time to the point that where you have the muscle strength to do a concentric exercise of that. The book goes much more in depth in the times that you need to do that. When you do make your own workout plan, I highly suggest purchasing that book. It's filled with so much information. It's more based on calisthenics and gymnastics, but it's very highly applicable to aerial arts. With the Applied Anatomy book, I picked out each group of muscles that's listed on that diagram and I made sure that I performed exercises to strengthen each of those muscle groups. For example, for the core, you have the hollow body position, you have the plank, side plank, forearm plank, side forearm plank, tick-tock, and v-sits. Then for if I needed to work on my core and legs and a little bit of my hip flexors, like pulses on the floor, to add a little bit more, I would keep my hands off the ground and have them at your stomach and then pulse that way. You're using more of your core it will really burn your quads and your hip flexors when you're doing it. And the next thing I would do L-sits and the L-sit variation where you would bring your knees to your chest, kick them out into an L-sit and then scissor them down. For my upper body, mostly what I felt I needed to do most were 
knees to chest and knees to triceps. Another thing that you need to pay attention to is to perform activation exercises. This encourages the muscles to fire during aerial rather than your body compensating with other muscles. So I gathered all the information for that. Um, there are a couple things that I did. I would just look online and find anything that was activation exercises and would do them before aerial and figured out which ones worked best, which ones did I feel that I was more solid and more stable using. After all of this, I Personally, what I didn't do well was that my triceps were lacking, so I built those up with these centric exercises. Then my core was never engaging, so I had to do a lot of isometric holds with my core so that I would learn to build up the endurance. I had to do a lot of concentric movement with my lats and my traps because those were the last things that were not firing right at the end of my straddles. After combining all of these things together and having somewhat of a plan for approximately two to three months, my straddles came back much more straight. They have a little bit of a micro bend in them. I'm well on my way to doing them as well as I did before in my old studio. But if you guys do want an example of what I did to work out or to condition my straddle, uh, just leave a comment in the section below and I'll put that up. Those are the things that I did to get my straddle back. If anyone's tried this or has other exercises that they've used that they felt were more successful with, please email me, let me know. Love to hear from you. Until next time.